Hello, son, my friends. The Heinz Honey and Almond Cream Program. <laughs> Starring George Burns and Gracie Allen with Frank Parker, Ray Noble, and his orchestra, and Truman Bradley speaking. And now George Burns and Heinz Honey, our presidential candidate who threw her hat in the ring and forgot to take it off, Gracie Allen. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Hello. Hello. What are you, what are you laughing at? Oh, at that sales girl at Bullock's Mochi today. Uh, what, uh, what happened? Well, I told her I wanted two pairs of silk stockings, a bazaar, and a girdle. Well, what's so funny? Well, you should have seen her face when she asked who they were for, and I said they're for the President of the United States. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, must have been strange. Oh. Well, your campaign's sure been keeping you busy, hasn't it? Oh, you? yes, Truman. I've been giving interviews, posing for pictures, appearing on radio programs. Well, last Sunday I was on Jack Benny's program. I heard you and you as well. Oh, well, thanks, Don. You're welcome, Mary. You, kn- <laughs> you know, Jack called for me in his next role, and it was so romantic. All during the ride to the studio, he drove with one hand. Well, well... Where did he keep his other hand? Around your waist? Well, no, on the fender. It kept falling off. <laughs> I'd like to see that, Maxwell. Well, they certainly are swanky on the belly program. As soon as we arrived at the studio, Rochester rushed up and took Jack's hat and coat. And... Uh, did, he, did he take your hat and coat? Oh, don't be silly. Mine wouldn't fit him. <laughs> no, not nearly as well as Jack. No. Oh. Hello, Frank. Hello. Oh, my, but my new postmaster general looks pretty tonight. Oh, uh-huh, thanks, Chris. Say, Gracie, when you were up there Sunday night, did you meet Dennis Day? Oh, sure, I met him. Well, confidentially, Gracie, what is he like? What is he like? Well, he's got the most beautiful... Well, well, never mind, don't tell me. Oh, there, sir. Uh, you're not jealous, are you, Pinky? Jealous? Say, what has he got that I didn't have before he got it? And if he has it, where did he get it? Well, I happen to know that he gets hundreds of fan letters every day. Well, he won't get them much longer. He won't, huh? No. You seem to forget that he has a wonderful voice. And you seem to forget that I'm going to be the postmaster general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think I see what you mean. But, Frank, do you know what you can get if we're fooling around with the mail? Well, my sister Hazel got a fur coat. Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> well, Dennis Day is cute. He said he has half a mind to vote for me. Well, if you get enough people with half a mind, you're bound to be elected. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Mary Livingston's going to be Queen of England. Mary Livingston is going to be Queen of England? That's what she said. She said, Stacy, when you're President of the United States, I'll be the Queen of England. <laughs> But only she'll get there first. Oh, yeah? Hello, Ray. Hello. I say, Gracie, I'd like to ask you this. Is San Francisco part of the United States? Well, I-, I wouldn't know, Ray. You see, I was born there, but I left when I was 12 years old, and I never found out. <laughs> of course, San Francisco is part of the United States. Why? Well, my band is playing there at the Palace Hotel, you know, and the people there are continually asking, how do you like it in this country, Mr. Noble? <laughs> And what do you say? Well, of course, I try to flatter them, so I say I like their country nearly as well as my own good old USA. Oh, <laughs> nice piece of flattery, Ray. Oh, and last Thursday, I met Baby Snook. I know. Baby Snook and her daddy are going to vote for me, too. No, they're not. Why? Vote for you, it's ridiculous. Why? Stop with that lie. Baby Snook is only seven years old, and you've got to be 21. Yeah, but she's got to vote three times. <laughs> I never thought of that. Hey, you know, it's a funny thing, George. From where I was standing, I could have sworn Baby Snooks looks just like Fanny Bryce. You know, they're slightly related. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh. Say, Gracie, I heard you last week on Rudy Valley's program. Oh, too. yes, and is that really affectionate? Hey, mm-hmm. wasn't that Francis Langford on the program? Yeah, did you hear it? No, Francis hasn't got a radio in a car. Oh. <laughs> Don't cancel your stance. Yesterday, a motorcycle cop stopped me for speeding, and I said, You can't stop me, officer. I've just been appointed the Supreme Court judge by our next president, Gracie Allen. Oh, good for you, too, Sure, right away, his whole attitude changed. He was very polite. Yeah. What do you mean by polite? He took his hat off while he was writing out the ticket. <laughs> I, uh, I thought so. And last night, I met Fiddler D and Molly. And Harlow Wilcox, the announcer, made a swell speech all about me. Did he mention Johnson's floor wax? Yeah, he saved that for the finish. Oh, that's a bright finish. <laughs> you know, Molly's going to get all 
gals in Wistful Vista to vote for me. So, uh, three votes in Wistful Vista is a landslide. Well, she said she's going to make her husband vote for me, too. Sibber? No, she's telling the truth. <laughs> Gracie, don't you know when people are pulling your leg? No. You know, once I thought somebody was pulling my leg, but it was only my girdle tugging at my heartstrings. <laughs> Did you ever have your knee tapped with a hammer to test your reflexes? Oh, sure, by a well-known psychiatrist. Well, how about the little jerk? We charged him five dollars. And believe me, it was worth it. Well, anyhow, Molly was very happy to get my recipe for spaghetti a la Ran McNally. Spaghetti a la Ran McNally? Yes, instead of a recipe, I used the roadmap. I see. Sort of a detour to indigestion. Yes. Well, you see, the spaghetti covered with red sauce are the main highways. I do. And the plain white spaghetti are the unpaved highways. Sounds very interesting. Yes. And the meatballs mark the state capitals. <laughs> well, with a dish like that, I guess the speed limit would be 15 meals an hour. <laughs> uh, 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 how's that one, Frank? Cheap underwear. Cheap underwear? It shrinks. It does, uh. <laughs> Yes. Hello, it's you. And George, there's something I don't quite understand about politics. What don't you understand, Ray? Uh, this mud slinging. Well, what about it? Well, the money that the candidates use to buy the mud with, is that called the slush fund? Yes, Ray. It... <laughs> See, Ray, how's my campaign doing up in San Francisco? Well, I didn't like the attitude of some of the people at the polls when I went to vote for them, for, for you yesterday. You tried to vote for Gracie yesterday? Oh, of course, yes. I went into the booth and pulled the curtain across the front and turned that jolly little handle, and before I knew it, somebody was pouring water all over me. <laughs> Ray, that was a shower, and you turned it on yourself. I don't care who did it. It was a dirty trick. Mm. <laughs> well, the next time you see a voting booth marked laundry chute, step into it. All right, sir. Right, sir. Oh, yeah. You know, Bob Hope is going to vote for me, too. All right, so he ain't me. Oh, George, you should have been with me last night when I was on his program. It's bad enough to be with you on this program. Yeah, isn't it? I mean, I don't like it. Yeah, don't we have fun? Oh, quiet, quiet. What about the Bob Hope program? Did he make a speech? Well, did he? Yes. Well, I I mean, did you make a speech? Well, I started to, but I stopped. You stopped? Why? Well, every time I opened my mouth, he brushed my teeth. (laughs) Do that every time. So Bob Hope was going to vote for you, huh? Well, he said he didn't want to see me in the White House. So what? So I met him downstairs in the drugstore. Well, that's not. <laughs> Did you meet Brenda and Cabina? Oh, uh, what station are they on? They're on, the Bob, they're on Bob Hope's show. The two female Draculas, two girls without shapes or teeth, and they both had beards. Were they on the Bob Hope show? Sure. Oh, I thought I dreamt that. <laughs> Gracie, did anybody ever tell you that you were a little delirious? Yeah, Dr. I.Q. Monday night. And he tried to quiz me. He tried to quiz you? Yeah, he put his arms around my waist and he quizzed me a little bit, and then I said I'd... Never mind, never mind, never mind. (laughs) Gracie, I've heard enough. The whole thing is absolutely... Oh, it's probably my campaign manager. probably. A Hein, Sonny, and Alan Queen program. Hein, Sonny speaking. Who? Oh, hello. How are you? Fine. Fine. What? Can I recommend a good trucking company to move your things? Well, well, let me think now. Mm. How soon do you have to get out? Oh, oh, that soon, huh? Well, I'm doing a program now, but I'll call you back later. Goodbye. Who was that? President Roosevelt. It was. Uh... <laughs> and now, Truman Bradley with a simple musical hand <laughs> Ever since school days, Anne had a sweetheart named Joel. And when Joe and Anne grew up, they were married. And should have lived happily ever after, but they didn't. For Anne started in doing dishes and cleaning house every day and forgot to take care of her hands. Mm-hmm. She should have used Heinz honey and almond cream, you know. So one night, Joe looked at Anne and said, Your hands give me the shivers. They're chapped and red. Just like a man's, rough as sandpaper. Anne cried and cried. Then, being a very sensible girl, she stopped crying and bought herself a bottle of Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. She used Heinz that day, and the next day, and every single day thereafter. Well, you know what happened. Heinz Honey and Almond Cream helped Anne win back her soft, thrilling honeymoon hands, in spite of all that housework. And back came her thrilling man, Joe, with more compliments than ever. Now, the moral of this little story is, use Heinz Honey and Almond Cream yourself for softer, smoother hands. For Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening, contains two vitamins, A and D. And Heinz gives you thrilling honeymoon hands for good. Now, here is Frank Parker. 
Thanks, Sue. From the musical show, Roberta, by that master of melody, Jerome Kern, I'm going to sing an enchanting song, Lovely to Look At. What appeals to me is just your charm and dignity. Not what you wear, but just an air of great repose. You are quite perfect from your head down to your toes. Both night and day, I am moved to say, dear, lovely to look at, delightful to know. Combination like this Is quite my most impossible scheme come true Imagine finding a dream like you You're lovely to look at It's thrilling to hold You terribly tight Oh, we're together, the moon is new and oh, it's so lovely to look at you tonight. Lovely to look at, delightful to know, and heaven to kiss. A combination like this is quite my most impossible steam come true. Imagine finding a dream like you. You're lovely to look at. It's thrilling to hold you terribly high. For oh, we're together, the moon is new. And oh, it's lovely to look at you tonight. You're beautiful, my darling, just the way you I've heard that song done. It was beautiful. Ah, thanks, boss. And just for that, I'll let you go through the post office as first-class mail. Well, I'll sit right down and call myself a letter. Oh, boys, boys, I just found out a way to give all the other candidates a terrific licking. A licking? How? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I'll put their pictures in all the stamps. You want to make it feel like two cents. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Gracie. Oh, Bubbles, you're late. I know what your campaign mail has been pouring in by the bucket full. Oh, good. Dry it off and we'll read it. Mm, yes. Hang it on the line outside. And listen to this telegram. Dear Gracie, your name came up at the polls today. Signed, Admiral Byrd. Aww. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? He's discovering me, too. Mm-hmm. The polls will be about the only place where you'll knock them cold. Oh, George, listen to this one. Add a girl, Gracie. Show them what's in you. Los Angeles Sex Ray Company. <laughs> they, uh, they think you're going to be president, huh? Well, they know it. They've got a little inside dope. You're telling me. <laughs> and, Gracie, before you do another thing, you better decide where you're going to hold your convention. Oh, yeah. Uh, the surprise party convention, huh? Yeah. Well, I think you ought to hold it under water, and if nobody calls for it in 30 days, you can keep it. Well, that ain't the way I hear it, John. Oh, quiet, quiet. <laughs> See, convention, convention, convention. Oh, Bubbles, take a letter to Boston. Boston? Oh, yeah, they've got swell baked beans there. Well, I don't like baked beans. I like a good stew. And my brother likes you, too. Well, thanks, thanks. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. All good. Boston, now. Dear sir. I guess Mississippi would be dear madam. Dear sir, in answer to the letter that you're going to write me, um, oh, tear it up, Bubbles. I'm too busy. Yeah, she's busy, busy. I mean, dizzy. Gracie, how about holding your convention in Topeka? What do you think, George? Well, I think the whole thing is silly. It's like a fellow who owned a restaurant. And had a lot of rye bread that he couldn't sell. Oh, and, pardon and... me, George, but if Grace is elected, what are you going to do? I'll take it easy. This fellow owned a restaurant. Well, of course, if she's not elected, don't you take it too hard. Yes, I'll kill myself. <laughs> well, just kill myself. And, Ray, I'm going to invite you to the White House for the Easter egg hunt. Oh, you'll never regret it. I know how to color those eggs for you. Do you? How? Uh, just put me on the dyes committee. Oh, go, go. <laughs> in San Francisco. 
and says so. What do you think, George? I think it's silly. It's like the fellow owned a restaurant and had a lot of rye bread that he couldn't uh, sell. Ah, good old San Francisco. He had a lot of rye... Good old uh, San Francisco. Good old San Francisco, yes. Yeah. I used to know a model there. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, a gorgeous figure, and boy, could she wear clothes. Beautiful, huh? Beautiful? Well, I went with her for six months before I found out she was a wax dummy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she, she probably melted in your arms. <laughs> Say, Bobo, I think I will hold my convention in San Francisco. All right, hold it in San Francisco. Well, what's the matter with Omaha? There's nothing the matter with Omaha. Then why shouldn't I hold it in, in Omaha? Nobody said that you shouldn't hold it in Omaha. Well, then what's all the argument about? There's no argument. Oh. Well, when I make up my mind where to hold my convention, I make up my mind. Bubbles, take a letter. All right, ready, Gracie. Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, nuts. <laughs> Dear Cal. Uh, oh, Terry, yeah, if I Yeah, Terry, too busy, yes. Hey, Bubbles, if I were you, I'd write with the eraser. Gracie, how about holding the convention in Cleveland? I think the whole thing is silly. It's like that man who owned a restaurant and he had a lot of rye bread that he couldn't You know, sell. I agree with and, George. And... That's where we ought to hold it. Where? In that restaurant. <laughs> what restaurant? With that man who has all that... Hey, will you leave parade. me alone? <laughs> Say, Gracie, how about Atlantic City? Oh, Atlantic City would be wonderful. Sure. That's where the Elks hold their convention. Yeah, but you're not running for the Elks. No, but the last time I was there, two Elks ran for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gracie, you remember that old saying, a rolling elk gathers no moose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I kind of like that, Truman, huh? <laughs> no. No. Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> George, imagine Gracie elected and me a Supreme Court judge sitting on the bench selling hives on the almond tree. Yeah, I can see you now with that long black robe. Yeah, yeah and me alongside him holding his soft white hand. Yeah. <laughs> George, it'll sound something like this. In the case of the people versus rough red hands, I find that the defendants, old man Winter and old lady housework, did willfully and intentionally inflict upon the plaintiffs bodily harm in the form of dry chapped hands. He's another Lawton. The evidence shows that your hands can thrill some of the people some of the time, some of the people all of the time, but for hands that thrill all the people all of the time, use Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Case dismissed. Oh, that's wonderful. Ah, well, I get it, Truman. The Supreme Court is the dollar bottle. Comical and economic. Thank you, thank you. Say, Bobo, that settles it. I'll hold my convention in Omaha. Take a letter. All right. Omaha, Nebraska. Dear Neb. Dear Neb. Um, well, Miss Allen, you know our party emblem, the mama kangaroo with the baby kangaroo in the pouch? Yeah, what about it? Well, the baby is lost. Well, how did that happen? Mama's got a hole in her pocket. Get oh. out. Get out. <laughs> I say, George, what is a kangaroo? Kangaroo is an animal that lives on mountaintops. Really? What a strange diet. <laughs> Ray, Ray, do you know, do you know that you and Gracie are nuts? That's what Jerry Colonna keeps telling them down at the office. Oh, now what do they say? They say, we know, we, we know. know, and so do we. Uh... Gracie, your letter. Oh, yes, Omaha, Nebraska, dear Ned. You know, George, I love Omaha. I'd even live in Omaha except for one thing. What's that? Too far from the White House. Yes, yes. Be too long of a walk to the office every day. Yeah, letter, Omaha, Nebraska, dear Ned. I will see hey, you... Hey, Tracy, at your convention, are you taking a straw vote? Yes. Well, then I'd better not take my felt hat. Oh, <laughs> stop, stop. I can explain how silly this whole thing is. Just listen to me for one minute. It's like a fellow who had a restaurant and he had a lot of rye bread that he couldn't sell. Now, please, and, Judge, and... Bubbles is writing. Bubbles, read back the letter. Omaha, Nebraska, dear Ned. It's just like that fellow who had a restaurant and he had a lot of rye wait bread. Wait a minute, sell. wait a minute. That's the letter? Yes doesn't make sense. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. Well, then why are we trying to tell it? Oh, come on. Come on.
That was beautiful. Isn't that composition from your Indian suite? Yes, darling. <laughs> oh, go away. Oh, come on in, Charlie. Boys, this is Charlie Henderson. Hello, Charlie. How Charlie how Henderson, you? George Burns. How do you do, Mr. Henderson? <laughs> You're Mr. Henderson. Oh, excuse me. I'm a little nearsighted. <laughs> you mind if I sit down? No. <clears throat> Chair is over there. Oh, pardon me. Uh, I washed my eyes this morning, and I can't do a thing with them. <laughs> Gracie. Gracie, where did you find this guy? I got him in a raffle. In a raffle? Yeah, I lost. I lost to a plane. What does he do? Well, he's a songwriter. He wrote my campaign song. Campaign song? Mm-hmm. And he wrote it? Yes. You don't believe me? I'll play the piano for you. I'd like to hear it. You're supposed to open the piano first, you know. <laughs> oh, gee. I washed my ears this morning and can't hear a thing with oh, <laughs> Well, he's a great songwriter. You know how a songwriter needs a partner? One fellow writes the music and one writes the words? Yes. Well, he has two partners. Two partners? Yes. One writes the lyrics and the other writes the melody. What does he do? He turns the pages. <laughs> Smart as a whip. Gracie, shall I play the campaign song on the bass fiddle? Oh, sure, Charlie. Boy, this is a beautiful bass fiddle. Well, here I go. That's Bubbles and get away from her. Mind your own business, Mr. Burns. No. Oh. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, will you go and sit down in the audience until we're through? Okay. Uh, Mr. Burns, where are the steps? Right over there, right here. <laughs> Found them. <laughs> well, he we washed his feet and couldn't do a thing with them. Oh, uh, George, you'll be crazy about my campaign song. You see, every president had a campaign song. Even George Washington had a campaign song. Well, what was it? The Song of the Cherry Tree. Song of the Cherry Tree? Yeah, well, chop, chop, chop. Well, all right, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> How about uh, sailing along on Moonlight Bay? For a campaign song? No, to look for a place to hold Grace's convention. <laughs> Yes, Ray. We'll go right now. Oh, then I'd better run home and pack my robe. Yes, do that. Yes. Do that. Yes. You know, George, it's not easy to write a campaign song. Charlie was six months doing this song. Why? Well, they wouldn't let him out any sooner. Hmm. That's a smart kid. Yeah, Charlie wrote this song by ear. By ear? Well, how else can you hold a pencil when you're in a straitjacket? Well, he could hold it in his mouth. Well, where would he put his fountain? I don't know. You brought him in here. Well, he's a fine composer. He writes for strings and for brass. One time he even got money. Yes, oh. <laughs> that, that was when he wasn't looking. Say, uh, speaking of campaign songs, the Postmaster General ought to have a little number. George, do you know Margie? Yes. Has she got a phone? <laughs> yeah. well, what about Edna? Temporarily disconnected. Get it, get it, get it. Get it. <laughs> George, I must tell you about Charlie. I'd rather hear your campaign song. Well, in a minute. You see, Charlie learned to play a saxophone by mail. By mail? Yeah, he didn't have a saxophone. So what'd he do? Well, he used to blow his lessons into an envelope and send it to a friend who had a saxophone. <laughs> well, I've heard enough about him, Gracie. Well, very few people know this, but Charlie played the flight of the bumblebee on the piccolo. How did it leak out? Through the hole. Oh, it did. Well, I'm glad they hear that. My new campaign song. Sing it, Gracie. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. Won't you please give this little girl a hand? That's me. Even big politicians don't know what to do. Gracie doesn't know either, but neither do you. So vote for Gracie. To win the presidential race, a hundred million strong. That's right, you can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie, keep voting all day long. Keep voting all day long. Keep voting all day long. Fill up the battle of the clock. Keep voting all day long. Well, thanks. Would you like to hear Frank Parker sing my song? Oh, 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 Gracie. Oh, Figaro, Figaro. Say, Gracie, there's something you ought to know. I'm for Gracie to lead the boys of Mary Chasey. A hundred million strong. That's right, you 
can't go wrong. Vote for Gracie. Keep voting all day long. And now who'd like to hear George sing a chorus? Thank you. I'll vote for Gracie so I can be by myself. Please vote for Gracie so I'll be happy on the shelf. If she's elected, I'll be neglected. So I can stay home and play solitaire and keep that silly game out of my head. Daily reports of freezing temperatures, sleet storms raging from coast to coast. Now, sleet and bitter cold wind can chap your hands severely. If you must go outdoors in this weather, be sure to lotion your hands first with Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. Take a tip from thousands of outdoor workers who use Heinz regularly. Telephone linemen, cross-country truck drivers, farmers, men whose jobs keep them out in the worst weather. They've found from experience that Heinz is extra creamy, extra softening, and works fast to help keep hands smooth and comfortable. Well, naturally, if Heinz helps extreme chapping like that, then you know it will help guard your family against chapping in all kinds of weather. And say, you know that dry, winter, itchy feeling you get all over, especially when you wear heavy woolen clothing? Well, just try Heinz as a body rub after your bath. It feels wonderfully soothing to chapped tender skin. You can get Heinz Honey and Almond Cream at the nearest toilet goods counter in 10, 25, and 50-cent sizes, and the big dollar bottle which is economical for family use. Remember Heinz, spelled H-I-N-D-S. Thanks, Truman. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Well, good night. Well, I've got to run home and knit a sweater for the little stranger who's coming to the White House. Uh, what little stranger? The vice president. Well, good night, all. <laughs> now you can take your choice, Heinz hand cream or Heinz lotion. Or best of all, treat yourself to both. Heinz hand cream comes in smart red and white jars, like the famous lotion. Heinz Hand Cream is a quick softener for rough hands. It's inexpensive, too, in two sizes, only 10 cents and 39 cents a jar. Vote for Gracie. Vote for Gracie. She's the best little skipper in the land. Join us again next Wednesday at this same time over these same stations. Good night. Truman Bradley speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting City. Politicians don't know what to do. Crazy doesn't know either, but neither do you. So vote for Crazy. Crazy, 